Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually uh, tap into one of the questions in the in the in the quiz. If you are sort of sort of savvy and you are a little bit more, I guess, quick and cunning, I suppose you might pick up my little hint, but I'm not going to reveal anything obvious in an obvious way. Um, on the quiz, there was a question where there was a number in front of the x squared, and it goes like this. And there were a couple of people that asked, Mr. Kim, are you sure this is right? Um, was it this? Yeah, right? They're like, I don't see any numbers that multiply to this and add to that. You were correct. In my heart, I was actually a little happy because it showed me that you knew and you practiced. But what you forgot is that every single example that we did did not have a number in front of the X. It was actually a one. So that, that's why it was out of two. The question was, how do you, what, what could you do to this trinomial so that the X square only has a one in front? Yeah, that's, that's where you needed to start. And some people got it, some people didn't, but either way, I'll give you as many part marks as I can based on what work you show me. Today, we are going to look at an example or examples where it legitimately has a number in front of x squared and you cannot factor it out. You can't divide it out. For example, if I were to try to divide the two out, I would get something like this. One is divided by, so two divided by two is a one, one divided by two is a 0 0.5, and six divided by two is a negative three. Like that's not something I want to factor. In your heads, turn over a new blank page. We are looking at what to do when the A value is not a one. Okay, so put a big star next to it. Okay, one thing you want to do is, in other words, every single time you want to approach a question, so for all factoring Q's, check if A is common factorable. Because if you can common factor the A out, amazing. It makes your life so easy. What you want to do is avoid this situation as much as possible. And if you can factor out the A, do it because it makes your life easy. But if you can't, this is the only way you can go about it. This is the final, final technique for chapter two. Okay? Yes. What do you mean factor out the A? Do you just mean like put on like the outside of all the brackets? Yes. By factoring out, I mean dividing out. So you divide, like my example here, I divided the two out of everything, right? You know how in, in expanding, you, multi, you can multiply the number in front of the bracket, right? So if I had, um, let's say if I had like three X plus five, if I multiply that out, it becomes three times X and then three times five, right? In the same way, three X plus five, I can divide that same number out of both, leaving me one X and five, right? They're just opposite sides of the same coin. So that's what I mean. Get the A out if possible. If you cannot, so it's right here, there is no common factor. So are we stuck? We are gonna learn this thing called decomposition. And if you explore the internet, if you care to look at the internet, there are other methods. But I believe this is probably the more straightforward, the more just like step-by-step -step sort of, um, you know, you have your study sheet, you can use it to your advantage kind of method. So I'm gonna do it that way. Here are the steps. Do you remember in the original simple trinomial factoring, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to the last number and your same two numbers will add to the middle number. Does that ring a bell from your quiz? 
You're doing the same thing, but look at what's different. You're gonna find two numbers that multiply not just C, but it multiplies to a product of A times C, but still adds to B. And then I'm gonna do something called decomposing that middle term into those two numbers. I'm gonna group and common factor and group factor. That means nothing to you. So let me demonstrate it. Ready? Here we go. We're gonna try this. Step one, okay. find two numbers. Sorry, uh, let's do this. A equals a two, B equals a one, C equals negative C. What is A times C in this case? Yep. Yes. Write your, name. Write your name down. Yep. Negative 12. So in other words, and what is B? One. So I need two numbers that will multiply to negative 12, but will add to one. So this is step one. Maybe I should write it, uh, write step one here. Uh, step one. So you're gonna have to use a bit of your, your, your brain cells today. Multiplies to a value of negative 12 adds to one. Oh wait, because this is very important. Sam? All right, how about this? What two numbers multiplies to a positive 12? Yeah? Positive 12, positive 12. Oh, um, three and four. Yeah, three times four will give you a positive 12. So what gives you a negative 12? Yep. Three times negative four or? negative three times positive four. Would you agree? These are negative 12, these are negative 12. So here's the thing. We don't want this, obviously. We want the negative 12, but which of these will add to a positive one? Three, I'll do it. Three plus a negative four is negative one. Uh -uh. Negative three plus a four, is a positive one. Yes. So the two numbers must be, uh, I'm gonna do positive four with a negative three, positive four with a negative three. Okay, so that's step one. Any questions with that? I'll ask you another one. Do you think you can do that by yourself? Find two numbers that multiply to, And you can do that. It might take some time, but you think you can do that. A lot of people are staring at me with blank feet. Yes. That's step one. This make sure you do this properly and you do it well. If it takes you longer, take your time. You will get used to it, but you still have to try and keep trying and keep trying. Next, step two is what we call decomposition. Look carefully at my term here. Do you see that's a plus one? Well, I am going to rewrite this as
And tell me if you think that makes sense or if that is mathematically legal. Does the top line equal the bottom line mathematically? Are they the same thing? Yeah, four minus three, right? It works. And if you can do this, and that's the hardest part, if you can do this, the rest is just very mechanical. Step, so this is a uh, step two. Yes. Uh, oh, it still has to agree with two and six. Yeah. It has to. Yeah, that's fine. If you can do that in your head, great. No, no, of course not. All right. If anything, yeah, mathematicians are lazy, right? If you can get there because you can do it in your head, that's where we want to be. It's great. Step three from here. Now, don't ignore the blue now. I want you to put the first two numbers in brackets, the last two numbers in brackets, and separate with a plus. So this becomes 2x squared plus 4x bracket. And then leave a space, negative 3x minus 6, close bracket, with a plus in between. So you can see I'm, I'm still not doing anything, uh, I guess, Ill mathematically illegal. I am simply manipulating the location of these numbers to better suit my needs. That's all it is. Okay, so this is step three right here. Okay, recap. Can you multiply these two numbers and find two numbers that multiply to that and add to this? It might take some time, but take your time with it. It doesn't matter. Number two, can you take those two numbers and break it apart? <laughs> then, can you put two brackets in? You see that it's not necessarily hard but it is still like a puzzle. So you have to take your time until you get used to it. Step four, common factor. So step four. Common factor, what is common between two and four? What is common between X squared and X? Common factor, this is Question 1A on your quiz, essentially. Can you common factor the first bracket for me? Alex? Pardon? E yes, what's in the front? What did you factor out to get X plus two? And an X, yeah. Can you also do the same for the second bracket? Can you factor out from negative 3x minus 6? What's the number we can factor out? Yep. Hmm. Not just 3, but a negative 3. Try to keep the x value positive. And let me tell you why. You know, look at those two brackets that you made. What do you notice? If you're doing this right, what do you notice? I know, I know there are people who absolutely did this correct on the quiz. Yeah? Yeah, these two green parts, they are common between the two terms. And so we are going to divide them out and this becomes, Two x plus a minus three, so basically two x minus three. Look at what you did, right? So this is step five. You were able to common group factor out. So you went from a trinomial that looked impossible and still turned it into two trinomials. And if you want to test yourself, 
try multiplying it out. X times 2X, 2X squared. X times negative 3, minus 3X. 2 times 2X, plus 4X. 2 times a negative 3, minus 6. You simplify that, you will get the original question. That's how you know you did it right. Today's lesson is very, very mechanical. Other than maybe step one right here, where you're trying to figure out a puzzle, everything else is very mechanical to the point where if you are good at the following steps, this the particular lesson, as hard as it might be, might be easier for you than the previous section. The rest of the class, the rest of tomorrow, the rest of everything is going to be up to you to practice. So, how about um, I'm going to do one more on the back page. But essentially, what I want you to do for today's homework is at the end. It, on the back page, I gave you some cutouts of our textbook. Number nine is a K-style question of literally, do you know how to do this or do you not know how to do this? Number seven is an A-style question, which, which gets you to use the application, use your factoring ability to get through. And number 11, it's a bit of a harder one. It's a thinking style. And you can bet that there is going to be some kind of key question on our test. Yes, Charlie. Step three to step four, I common factored. So I'm gonna clear this for a second if everyone's okay with that, because I'm sure you're copying this. Or are you done copying? Okay. Let me just try to open up some space here. So I can demonstrate how I got to that point. Okay, so off on the side, if you wanna make a bit of a note, two X squared plus four X, let's start with the coefficient. So only focus on the two and the four. What is a common number I can divide out of both? Two. So if I divide a two, this becomes X squared plus 2x so far, right? Does that make sense? Uh, and if you're not sure, remember this is a one, by the way. If you're not sure, you can test yourself. If you multiply it in, that becomes 2x squared and 4x. Now, I'm not done. x squared and 2x also both are multiplying, or they, they have an x inside it, like they're, they're multiplying with an X. So I could divide both terms by an X, leaving me X and the two. Common factor. So if you want something that's similar to our quiz, take this, uh, check this out. Let's pretend I have X squared, Y squared, and Z plus X, to x, y, z. What is common between both terms? One x. So this is x, y squared, z squared plus two y, z. Is that the only one? No. You can factor out a y as well. So this is x, y, x, y, z squared plus two z. Anything else? Is that x, y, z, x, y, z plus two, right? These are all just examples of common factoring. So if you are comfortable with common factoring, step three to step four will become relatively smoother without thinking much. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Here's what I will do. I know I didn't provide any answer for these questions on the back, but I will very, very soon. I'm going to do it like on the spot. I am going to ask you to try as a, no, I'm going to do number, a letter D for you because it looks harder than any of the other ones. But all the other ones, I'm going to expect you to try 
Do as many of these you can for tomorrow, and we will take up every single one. This is all in preparation for your test on Tuesday. Okay. If you turn the page, I'm going to do letter D. Letter D. D starts with 12 and cubed, 75 and squared plus 108 n. That's annoying. That has a cube in it and you've never seen that before. So obviously there must be some kind of trick. What is the trick? Thoughts? Katie? Well, logical thought process. You've never seen an n cubed before. You've never seen an x cubed before. How might I turn it into a square? The trick. No. Go ahead, Kaylee. Just like the other questions. Why not? Not divide by three, but let's divide an N out. Now, doesn't that inner trinomial look a bit more familiar? It looks more manageable. Yes, the numbers are big. So let's talk about those numbers. Is there a number that can divide out of all three? Think carefully and try it if you want in your tech, with the calculator. There is a number you can divide out of all three. It's a relatively a pretty small number. It's not a one. And I think you can guess it's probably not a two because that's an odd number. Carter, hang in there. Yep. Yeah. If I divide a three out, 12 becomes a four. The 75 becomes a 25. And the 108 becomes 30. Six. And I think there we are sort of stuck. And so step one, now we can do it. I mean, D is hard. D is the hard one. That's why I'm doing it with you. But all the other ones, you just follow the five steps. Step one, we have two numbers that are going to multiply to four times 36. That is, what is that? Uh, one, four, one, four, four. But those same two numbers have to add to a negative 25. Oof. 12, 12s, no. 13, no, 14, 15, 16. It's a number that works. Sixteen, sixteen. Let's see. Uh, oh, got it. Sorry. These are hard numbers, so I'll just be doing them with you. The two numbers are negative sixteen and negative nine. They will multiply to positive one forty-four, but they will still add to a negative twenty-five. So let's do this. I'm going to move this over. Nope, the rest is mechanical, take a look. So I'm gonna leave three N off on the side. I'm gonna focus on this part. Four N squared minus 16 N minus a nine N plus 36. And I will highlight that as I did before. This is now this. That's step two. What's step three? And you remember, if you don't remember, look at your sheet. 
What's step three? Now that we've decomposed it. Okay, now I will use green, oh no, I will use red. So you put the first two in brackets, the last two in brackets and separate it with a plus. Yes. Common factor, I divided a three out of everything. Yeah, I divided an N out of everything. Mm -hmm. Common factor. Okay, last one. Let me just finish this so that you can sort of uh, wrap up at least for today. Uh, there we go. So we have three N is still there. I don't know why this looks so thin suddenly. Oh, this is why. 3n common factor from 4n squared minus 16n it is 4n n minus 4 you can try that plus what can i factor out of negative 9n minus oh uh, sorry plus 36 i'm going to factor out a negative 9 giving me positive n minus a 4 The same thing as before. My final answer is 3n and minus 4 and 4n minus 9. And yes, there are these big brackets here, but once you get to the final answer, you realize those big brackets don't serve a purpose. It's just there because we had it before and it doesn't change the expression even if we don't have it. So that is hard. Your homework instead is to see if you can do numbers nine, A to C, E and F. Um, yeah, and if you have enough juice, do the rest, seven and 11. There are more homework pages that I can give you tomorrow. But first, let's see if you can actually do case style questions, actually do it as if it was a quiz. We'll see if you can try number nine in its entirety. I will be putting up the uh, answer key tonight. But um, yeah, come with questions tomorrow. Come with, I don't know how to do that one, Mr. Kim, tomorrow. Okay, we'll look at it more again then.